co-host Brian Fox, uh, also founder of Trust and Herd. And if you're new to Trust and Herd Live, uh, what we're doing to take a little bit of advantage of, of all the downtime is we're actually talking to entrepreneurs and founders of all of the event companies that we know so well and get a little background and an insight behind their story and the name. And uh, with that being said, I would like to welcome Mr. Jade Edwards of A Plus Staffing to Trusted Herd Live. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Really glad to be here and excited to, uh, to be with you on Trusted Herd Live. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, first off, Jade and me would like to thank all of you for your patience uh, as we figured out some uh, some streaming uh, issues there, but looks like everything is good. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, Jade, just to humanize you a little bit before we talk about A plus staffing, when you are not doing event staffing or any staffing with A plus, what can we find you doing? So probably chasing my nine-year-old and my 10-year-old around. I've got a third grader and a fifth grader, and they are very active in sports and music and the arts and all sorts of good stuff. So I'm in that season of life where when I'm not working, I'm usually chasing the family. <laughs> good stuff. Um, excellent, excellent. Well, let's talk uh, what we're here to talk about. So if we had just met today, um, and I didn't know anything about uh, Jade, or I didn't know anything about what you do, how would you describe A plus staffing to me? So we're staffing experts that run alongside our clients from event concept to final execution. Um, I think people in our industry understand that. Uh, for folks that are uh, maybe saying hello off the street, I talk about the fact that we represent brands. So when you see someone at a stadium or a sporting event or a music event, and they are with a phone company or an insurance company or some other type of consumer good, uh, we're the folks that are on, engaging on behalf of that brand, and we have a team of folks across the country that do that best. Very cool. And uh, A-plus staffing is a little bit bigger than just typical brand ambassador work. Is that right? That's correct. So we specialize in special events and catering. We staff large conventions. Um, we partner with logistics companies helping move large groups of people or moving fans around. Um, and we uh, focus very heavily on experiential marketing. Okay, great. And um, I think it probably begs uh, bringing up right now, but I see that um, A plus still has some things going on currently uh, for workers. Is that right? Absolutely. So we we've, we've pivoted with COVID-19 and we're doing everything we can to support the front lines. So we have folks that are in grocery and big box retail helping with sanitizing or wiping down or customer service. Um, we've got folks that are helping other essential businesses in any way that they can. Um, we've got a number of folks on our team that want to be out there working and we're doing everything we can to find opportunities for them to help out. That's excellent. Um, so this would be like the part of the movie where there's the screen goes still and Jade probably says, so you're wondering how I got here, right? And so those are the kind of questions that we're going to look at right now. Um, so before we knew Jade Edwards as event marketer, uh, what were you doing? What type of work before you got into the world of event marketing? So I was a professional singer and I was an event producer. Okay. And uh, can we find your songs on the radio or are you still a singer? Uh, so I am still a singer. No, I'm not on the radio. Um, but I actually realized probably about eighth grade that my ticket to college was going to be classical music. So okay. I actually um, auditioned for universities and uh, ended up attending um, Southern Methodist University on a voice scholarship wow. and um, planned to be a professional singer got into that world, really enjoyed it, uh, but realized that I enjoyed more than just the singing piece, right? Yeah. So then I pivoted and uh, started producing a kid's dance competition and emceeing and selling and doing all that for four years. Um, and I liked it a lot, but I realized that what I enjoyed more than just the competition was the people and the crowd and the team. And so when I landed at A plus staffing, um, I realized I was finally home because I was leveraging all the things that I liked the most about um, all the jobs I had before, which yeah. was engaging and motivating people. Yeah. What an interesting story. Uh, somebody just asked to give the fans a song. I'm not going to put you on that <laughs> song. But maybe we'll come back for another episode. Uh, I, just... I didn't know if that would come up, but uh, happy, to, uh, happy to offer something if you want it. <laughs> There you guys go. So we're going to do audience questions at the end. Just put in your requests right now. 
uh, and and we'll fire up some music at the end here. Um, <laughs> so uh, before you ultimately got into A plus, um, I guess the the singing was kind of a, a form of event marketing in a way um, on stage, but. Was there a little, was there like your first experience? Do you remember it outside of that realm um, with more traditional event based? Sure. So, you know, when I think about event marketing, um, after I had been singing professionally and then moved into the dance competition world, my boss came to my office in 2002 and set this, this book on my desk of 5,000 dance studios and basically <laughs> said, you've got 15 shows, you've got zero entries, you need to go build a dance competition. So literally, my job was event marketing, and my job depended on event marketing, right? Yeah. Um, so for four years, I was there. I wouldn't trade it. And what I learned from it is that that anything is possible if you believe you can do it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's kind of funny when we were getting started the day. Nothing ever goes perfectly to plan, and the key to success in this business, or really in any business, is being able to pivot and get creative, and at the end of the day, deliver what you promised. And there you go. And here we are, right? Um, so, uh, just for everyone to know, uh, this year, A plus is celebrating 25 years in business, which is really exciting. Um, certainly one of the longer standing event agencies and staffing agencies. Um, how did you get involved, uh, in A plus? So A plus was founded in 1995. I joined the team in 1996 as a temp. So I was bartending, I was serving, I was helping out at events, uh, dropping a song or two every once in a while, and it was a perfect college job. Yeah. Um, I stayed in touch with our founder, Betsy Garner, and um, you know it's a testament to never burning a bridge and, and always staying connected. Um, in 2006, I was traveling 20 weekends a year and knew that wasn't gonna work for my long-term kind of life plan. Yeah. and uh, connected with Betsy and said, hey, I think we can take this from a college student and recent grad staffing company to a nationwide um, expert company and providing work for brands, providing work for caterers, providing work for event companies. And we started hiring event professionals as opposed to just recent grads. They're still part of what we do. Yeah. Um, and we really started blowing this thing up and, and providing great teams to help our clients. So that's kind of where the student staffing part of the A-plus name comes from, right? Correct. So Betsy's vision was to provide college students with real life experience and businesses with a better solution than a traditional temp. And that was our model from 95 to 2006. Um, when I came back, I knew that I loved large events and I knew we had the potential to excel at large events. So we started selling in Cowboys Stadium. We started at uh, Texas Stadium at the time. Uh, we started selling in college football, yeah. uh, finding opportunities where we could deliver large groups of people to uh, to engage guests. Yeah, how interesting. Um, all right, so you and Betsy uh, are one and two, um, and the purpose and the mission, you just kind of talked about it, of why you started A+, Plus and, and got it up going off the ground. Um, do you remember uh, your guys' first client together? So our first client together was probably the Dallas Cowboys at Texas Stadium. Um, but our first experiential client was um, a company called Market Wave that's based here in Dallas, Texas. And okay. we were supporting an effort for our local utility company. Um, so our electric utility spans from Midland, Odessa in far west Texas to Tyler over in the east, down to Austin, all the way up to Denton. And I don't know if you guys remember or not, but in 2007, um, smart meters were rolling out and people were real nervous. They thought, what is this smart meter? Is it Big Brother? Is it going to look inside my house? Is the power company going to cut off my power if I use too much? And they created a 200, city, 200 stop tour where we would go out with a 2000 square foot expandable truck and we would start to teach consumers about how smart meters work, why they're great and how they could help you have a smart, smart home. Yeah. Um, that program went on for three years. Um, that client and uh, agency are still customers today. Wow. And uh, it really it gave us the opportunity to uh, kind of cut our teeth on an experiential marketing campaign and, and proactive consumer education program. Yeah, that is very, very cool. Um, and even the Dallas Cowboys deal. Uh, you know, I, I think of Jerry Jones, I think of Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and now I'm going to think of Jade Edwards right there standing next to him. Um, what a, what a good <laughs> that, uh, coming out of the gate. So, um, 
Well, and, and that was an incredible opportunity here in Dallas and, and just, just such a such a neat experience to be involved with that organization. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, so really, was it the utility company that you and Betsy thought, hey, this is, we're here to stay. Like this is kind of, we've made it a little bit um, in terms of, um, I don't know, steady work, um, steady gig? So I think that it certainly was a tremendous opportunity and, and a great first experiential client um, where, where I feel like we really, um, where I walked out of the building going, this, this is awesome, was probably Super Bowl 45. Okay. Um, Super Bowl 45, uh, 2011, we were at Arlington, uh, the, you know, stadium in Arlington, Texas. Um, you may remember it was called Snowmageddon. Um, the entire city was shut down with icy roads and snow drifts. It was the worst possible weather you can imagine. And we had 250 people on game day um, engaging fans, uh, working at the VIP tailgate. We had work that year with Doritos and Pepsi on the Super Bowl experience. Um, yeah. Walking out of that, I was like, man, this is incredible. And we've been fortunate enough to do every Super Bowl since. So we we, we just did our, our 10th Super Bowl and, uh, you know, longtime client. And really, um, you know, from that, then started with more tours and more brands and more awesome experiences. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, do you, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there wondering, do you get to go to the Super Bowl yourself? So I go every year. And I'm about 150 feet from the field, outside helping people get to and from and all sorts of things Super Bowl related. So I watch it on a screen very close to the stadium. Yeah. Um, and I'm inside the perimeter, but I haven't had the opportunity yet to sit down and watch a game. Uh, hopefully that's coming one day. Hopefully. I mean, I'm sure Jerry Jones is watching right now. He'll remember you. And uh, Jerry, call up Jade. He needs to get in the next Super Bowl. I don't even need to see it. I'll just hang out in the suite. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So we've learned a little bit about A+. Um, how about uh, where did the name come from for A+. We talked a little bit about the student staffing, but how about just the name A+. Well, we, we searched and searched, and we found out that B- minus was already taken. <laughs> So we decided that that, that A plus was was a better option, right? So in yeah. in, in all seriousness, our, our our goal was to earn an A plus in everything that we do, right? If you think about it, that's that's the best grade you can receive on an assignment, and we wanted to earn that in everything that we do as a company. So on the client side, that means that our team should be exceptional, our metrics should be strong, we should always be delivering what we promised. Yeah. On the employee side, our onboarding should be consistent, our training should be good. And we should be taking care of our people. You know, one of the things that um, that I point to is since 1995, we've hired W2 employees. And that's a huge differentiator in our field. You know, I know a lot of us have kind of moved toward that. But from the beginning, we felt like employees were the way to go. And we felt like we should pay people every Friday. Yeah. You know, we count on our team to take care of our clients. With, without them, we don't have a company. And so we're committed to taking care of our team. That's amazing. And I know, you know, just in the three years of us doing Trusted Herd, um, A plus consistently is getting great scores from um, event workers throughout the nation. And I think it's a testament to the leadership and your internal team um, of how they treat staff and, um, a, you know, cap tip uh, to you and the whole team there. Um, well, and we're incredibly proud, you know, that, that's one of the coolest things about what you've done with Trusted Herd is we never had an opportunity to hear that, that feedback. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really um, it lifts us up when it's great. And if there are uh, moments that it's not as great, feedback's a gift. And we want to take that and figure out how to make it better. Yeah. No, that's and, and that's exactly um, what it's supposed to do. So how about um, before we start talking about the team real quick, we got the name. How about the logo of A plus? Do you remember where it came from or how it came to be? <laughs> well, we've had an evolution of logos. Um, if you look way back in the past of A+, plus, we, we had more of a crayon, just kind of A+. Plus, um, and I just didn't feel like our big Fortune 100 clients would want to sign that agreement. Um, <laughs> so we evolved over time. Um, and probably, uh, well, right now we've got our 25th anniversary logo. And our really talented graphic designer you know, did that for us. 
Um, you know, I really feel like today that that logo just stamps the work that we do and lets our clients know that we're going to deliver an exceptional product. Yeah. No, it's great. I, I mean, I could only imagine previously maybe you were sending a crayon with that contract to sign with the crayon logo. As long as they sign, who cares, Ryan? Right. <laughs> um, good, good. Okay, so we got the logo, we got the name, we got the story. Um, 25 years is an incredible feat. Um, you can't do 25 years just yourself. And so tell me a little bit about uh, your team around you and, and what you appreciate the most about them. So the, the team around me is incredible. Um, I, I tell them as often as I can that they are the best team in staffing. Um, they, they wake up in the morning, they go to bed at night, taking care of our clients and ambassadors. Um, our business is 24 seven. Most of our events are night and weekend. And we believe there should always be a person in our office available to support our team in the field and support our clients. Um, they're amazing problem solvers. Um, they're solution oriented. And what's, what's really been most impressive over the past few years is they are experts at designing systems. So if we have a problem today, they're going to fix it, but they're going to come back tomorrow and put their heads together and figure out what can we do to improve the system to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Um, and that's really allowed the organization to grow beyond me because they're out there actively solving problems and coming and saying, hey, here's our new solution for this. And um, they, they crush it. And I'm incredibly proud. You know, I remember uh, the first time I had the chance to meet Rachel Kingsley. Um, we ended up, it seems like every event marketer summit we go to, uh, we end up on the same flight to to wherever it is and on the way home. But the first time I met her was out in San Francisco. And I, I remember I came away from the conversation after like 20 minutes and I go, wow, this is one bright individual. And I was such a big fan. And I, I think, you know, I know she's so prideful about working for A plus staffing and giving her team the tools and assets that they need to succeed. Um, and that empowerment, you know, really just kind of trickles down. So um, I think, you know, overall the organization um, runs so smoothly. Um, I really appreciate that, Ryan. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, how about, uh, Jade, do you feel like in the 25 years since you went from uh, singer extraordinaire to where we're at today, is there a habit or two that you feel along the way has helped you get to this this stage? You, you know, I think that um, what's most important is to appreciate the blessing, right? I mean, this is a tremendous blessing to be able to work with my team, to work with our ambassadors, and to work in such a creative industry. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, and the other thing that I think is most important, and I try to really preach to the team all the time, is always assuming positive intent. Um, I think that, especially with digital communication and email and you know all the things that fly around, you can make yourself crazy trying to figure out what someone really meant or figure out what someone's true motives are. Are they, are they really behind you? Are they working against you? So in our organization, I really encourage the team and work myself to always assume positive intent that you know, when when we work with a vendor like Trusted Herd, we assume that you want to see us grow and you want to see great things happen. When someone in the team is struggling or maybe hitting a challenge, we always need to assume that that person is doing everything they can to achieve a positive goal. Um, I think if you do those two things, you can you can get through every day and 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 grow and and really have a great experience. Yeah, that's great. Um, really, really good feedback. Um, how about uh, Jade Edwards' older self today? telling Jade Edwards younger self uh, when that book was slammed on your desk, uh, any, any advice um, how to get maybe where you're at today quicker? Would you, would there be anything or have you enjoyed the journey? So I've definitely enjoyed the journey. Um, number one, I think don't sweat the small stuff, right? Like, like just don't, don't get down in the weeds um, and always take the high road. You, you, know, you know, I heard a, a, a long time ago um, when you get down in the mud, nobody wins and everybody gets dirty. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we, we've all been in situations where we look back and we say, you, you know what, that I looked terrible in that situation because of the choices that I made and taking the high road, uh, would have been so much better. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I continue to work hard at today. But I think, you know, from the beginning, um, you know, there, there are not a ton of opportunities where I feel like I didn't, but there are definitely those times where I'm like, you know, 
if that had gone a different direction, it might have resulted in a partnership or yeah. a new opportunity down the road. Yeah, that's it's such good advice for, for anybody, right? I mean, that's almost life advice um, because I think so often we do look back and we're like, God, I wish maybe I did this a little bit differently or I, I acted it a little bit differently. And, you know, it's like that one in interaction, one engagement can, can change everything for you in a positive way. So um, really good stuff. How about um, one piece of advice that you would give to event workers, um, just in general? So first of all, we cannot survive without you. And, um, and we're so appreciative of everything that you do. I, I think that you, um, you have to respect the power that you've been given and you've got to treat every guest like the CEO. You know, you guys are the face of our industry and when you crush it, we all win and we book more work. Um, when things don't go well, we all lose. So I would say get the information you need to be successful, be amazing, and the sky's the limit for your professional journey. You know, everyone on our team has been in the field, yeah. whether they were running restaurants or working for brands or, you know, I've got someone on my team that produces marathons, right? Uh, well, like, I mean, th these guys are a product of the doors that they've opened by doing a great job. And I think that when you wake up and you're a little tired or you've had to find parking or, you know, something went wrong and your direct deposit didn't hit, you know, those are the moments when you've got to rise and be that face, know that we're behind you and we're going to take care of you. Yeah. Um, and we're a great job. So our industry thrives. You know, if, if we don't have those folks in the field, the CEO comes by and says, you know, that that brand ambassador wasn't that great. What uh, what else can we do next year? And instead, we want them to come by and say, wow, that was awesome. Yeah. I want to do more events with this guy. Yeah. And and that's that's the name of the game, right? That's how every business grows. And um, I think the one unique thing for staffing agencies is, is uh, the asset of, of being a really great staffing agency is a result of the people that you hire and, and how they perform out there. And if they're performing well and they enjoy working for that company and you get that CEO that comes by and says, hey, Jade, I just want to let you know I was out at whatever, even a small town right in the middle of nowhere um last weekend and just wonderful engagement with the person that you hired for us and uh hey we got another 12-week program coming up here in in two weeks that we want to get you on board and and really you know it's that one workers interaction with the right person out of the field at the right time that can bring more work for that agency and more opportunity for all the workers um, that enjoy working for them when i think too it's important to remember that we 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 notice that and we celebrate that. And that product specialist is our next field manager. And that field manager is our next regional manager. And when a client calls and says, hey, I've got a full-time account manager position. I want you to help me find the right person. Yeah. All history goes into, you know what, this is the right person. And it all was at the, uh, you know, Comfort County Fair. Yeah, yeah, it, it's so funny. It doesn't matter what the event is. Um, how about uh, getting towards the end here, and then we got some audience questions. Um, what do you look for in workers who want to work with A plus? Great question. So we look for enthusiasm, we look for professionalism, and we look for reliability. You know, when when we bring someone on, I'm not always looking for an incredible resume. I'd like to see that they have some related experience or that they're excited about this industry. But when we're meeting with them face to face, we want to see energy. We want to see that they have a professional appearance. We want to see that they can meet us for that face-to-face uh, -face meeting on time, right? You know, we, we've got a, a small window to figure out if this is someone we should add to the team yeah. and someone that we should put our, our promise to our brands in their hands. Um, so being on time, being professional and bringing, bringing enthusiasm are, are the three non-negotiables for us. Yeah, and it, and it all starts, right, with that face-to-face -face interview um, over the camera, right, and how you present yourself. Absolutely, and, and fortunately, technology just makes that uh, makes it easier and easier, and that's something that as, as we grow, we'll, we'll hire more recruiters and we'll hire more folks to do those face-to-face -face interviews, yeah. but we'll never move away from them. Yeah, no, it's, it's such a critical piece. Um, how about, uh, actually, before we get to this last question uh, of, of what we had before audience, a plus does post jobs on Trusted Herd, but tell everybody right now, hey, I really like what Jade is saying. I really like the A plus story. I want to work for them. I want to get in their database. Where can they go right now to do that? 
Uh, great question. So if you go to our website, um, apluspeople.com, you can click log in and it'll have a pop-up box and it'll say, join our team. Um, and that's probably the best way to fill out a form. We've got lots of time right now. Yeah. Um, our, our recruiters are ready to find great talent. So if you have an interest, apluspeople.com, go to login screen, click join our team, and we'll get you pointed to the right place. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, don't do that right now, by the way, everybody. We still got a couple minutes, but then afterwards you can go uh, do that. Um, let's see, you have, you've done this uh, really since 2000, uh, 1996. So you've come a really long way in this journey. You know, I often see right now, great companies are born out of times like this, right? And, and there are opportunities and certainly you can start a business at any time. But would you give anybody any sort of advice that is looking to start a business right now, whether it's in the event industry or they're looking to maybe do something else um, that you've learned? Sure, so, so I think that, that trust is everything. It's the hardest thing to earn and the easiest thing to lose. Um, so when someone puts their trust in you, you have to deliver. Um, choose your partners carefully. Uh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm blessed that I have a fantastic partner and we're on the same page. And in this uh, challenging time, we are doing everything we can to support the company and support our team and make sure that we uh, are around for another 25 years. Yeah. And, uh, and focus on what you're best at. You know, Brian and I were talking about the pivots we're making with COVID and, and how we're helping out with grocery or we're helping out with, uh, for, you know, frontline essential businesses. That's an area that before COVID, I wouldn't have said we were best at, right? I'd say we're best at brand engagement. We're best at hospitality. We're best at large events, right? But through this crisis, we're finding out we've got a lot of great people that want to help out these frontline essential businesses. So yeah. we may come out of this with a whole new division where we take advantage of those opportunities and find a whole new team of people that want to do that work or some people on our current team that may want to transition over to that work. So, so I think that know what you're best at, but I, I guess my fourth thing would, would also be flexible to what the market needs. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's get into some audience questions. I, th I guess everyone's gonna let you off the hook, Jade, because I haven't seen any comments of, uh, hey, I want this song, Jade, in this key. Uh, Brian, <laughs> cue up this instrumental track on YouTube. Um, all right, so we have a question here. Um, it's a little bit deep, but maybe you can touch on this last part because we have talked about the front end. Um, what is A Plus's guidelines, policies, and company's philosophies on hiring? But but we kind of talked about that. How about this last part? Retaining high quality brand ambassadors. What does A Plus do to retain great talent? So we believe if you treat people well, they'll treat you well in return. And we always look first to our five star folks. We we track everything our people do in the system, right? When they have a great comment, when they do a great job, when they go above and beyond um, number of jobs they work for us, that sort of thing. And when we go to, to choose somebody for a job, we're always looking at your track record with us. We're looking at what great things ha have you done well on our team. Um, and we're also looking at what you're doing in the world. You know, what are the brands you're working for? What's on your Facebook, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the first piece of that is to always look internally first. Um, and second, to always win great work that people are excited to do. You yeah. know, I tell our clients all the time, if, if we have 10 different programs with you, that allows us to take your team tenfold. Whereas if we only have one, we're just staffing one and people are moving on to other companies for other things. So I think the, the first step is to recognize the talent inside our organization. The next step is to always try to win the best work. Yeah, oh, that's, that's wonderful. Um, how about uh, this one? We have, uh, currently it's it's a hot topic, right? Uh, for everybody, but certainly a lot of the brand ambassador uh, Facebook groups. What's your view on former employees applying for unemployment at this time? You know, it's a great question. And, and I think that all of us that have W2 employees are, are always looking for ways to reduce expense. And when employees apply for unemployment, it hits our unemployment rate and it does raise our expense. Um, but I think that there are times when it is warranted and now is one of those times. I think that every one of us, myself, A plus staffing, my team, all of our ambassadors should be looking for any opportunity to make it through this COVID crisis. And yeah. there's unemployment available. You absolutely need to apply for it. You absolutely need to collect those dollars. 
they're there to help you make it through. Um, I hope that the government or the workforce team or whomever will give us some grace because obviously many of our ambassadors are gonna be taking advantage of those programs. Sure. Um, and I hope that our rates won't skyrocket, but I would never ask our team to not take advantage of a program that's gonna help them make it through this yeah. uh, to help my unemployment rate, right? So go apply if you need help. Teresa and our HR team are, are ready to help you. Um, yeah. So feel free to reach out um, and, and we can certainly give you advice if needed. That's good. And, and I think we're all in it together, right? And I've seen so many people offering to help. Um, and it's just, um, I think that's what we all need right now, right? Um, someone to, to help us hold hands and, you know, we're all going to get through this um, and, and come out on the other end. And we'll be back doing fun events, um, uh, hopefully sooner than later. So uh, I hope for sooner. what's that? I vote for sooner. Yes. Same, same, same. Uh, especially right like right now being April, the beginning part of April, this is like the moment of, uh, this is like the event season's uh, Daytona 500, like the big kickoff, right? Because uh, you're getting, so I was telling Jade earlier before we got on camera, it's 75 degrees in Chicago right now. And I guarantee you uh, there are lots of people walking around, not on the lakefront because our mayor uh, squashed that. But um, you know, this is like that moment, right? Where it's, a, it's really fun to be an event worker because you're going out different festivals, Northern hemisphere is heating up. And, um, you know, like I said, I've never, I've never rooted harder for the researchers and the, the scientists and, you know, doctors and nurses, they're all doing great stuff right now. And, um, they're trying to get us back out there as soon as we can. So. Well, and I think too, one of the good things I'm seeing is that, things are being postponed. They're not being canceled, right? right? So, so our largest groups are saying, we're not we're not canceling events, we're doubling our fall events, right? So yeah. if we can just sit back and follow the rules and stay home unless we're essential, yeah. then we can let this thing pass and we can all get out there and we'll be busier than we've ever been. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the encouragement for me is that it's not, you know, live events are not going away. We're just taking a pause and gonna double down here in Q3 and Q4. Yeah, I, that's such a good point. I've never really thought about it like that. Uh, also, the postponement and, and double stuff. Um, yeah, I miss engaging with people. I miss interacting with people. And so everyone who keeps talking like, oh, gosh, you know, e-events are going to be the next big thing and all that. Like, just think about yourself right now and how you're in your house and you're with, you know, your family or your significant other uh, or maybe you got roommates and you like looking at them and talking with them, but you miss looking and talking with lots of people, um, which I think a lot of people do. Well, absolutely. And, and I think it's a mistake to tell our clients, let's pivot to digital. I think we can provide a service and we can help and we can brainstorm ideas and we can figure out ways to engage during this strange time. Yeah. But, but live events are our business. You know, we, we, um, I get energy from every live event that we do. And as much as I love video chatting and zoom and all that sort of stuff, it's just not the same. So I think that, you know, our job is, you know, let's brainstorm ideas to get us through the next, you know, four weeks or so, but then let's get back out there and engage because that's, that's what our brands love. That's what we love. And that's the value that we, that we add to the marketing industry. Yeah, no, that's, it's so true. Um, all righty. Uh, I think that is all we have. Somebody did uh, request a Justin Timberlake song. Um, however, you didn't suggest what track it should be. Uh, hence, I think Jade will get off the hook here, but um, maybe we can have him back on uh, for like a power hour of just Jade singing songs. Um, you know what? I'm up for anything. Let's do it. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Well, um, Jade, thank you so much for, uh, for taking a little time out of your Tuesday, um, to be on Trusted Her Live and talk about how A-plus came to be and, and how you got here. Absolutely. Brian, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate all that you're doing for our, for our industry and, uh, re really excited to spend some time with you today. Well, thanks Jade. Um, so everybody, we, we had Jade today with A-plus staffing yesterday. We had Buffy with Forte tomorrow. We'll have Matthew, the, uh, the founder um, and CEO of Eight Days a Week, uh, another agency that's been around for a really, really long time. And then we have Invogue Marketing Thursday, 
and on Friday, um, Grayscale Agency. And I started this like a week ago uh, and started sending out some emails uh, to founders and owners and inviting them on to tell their story of how their agency came to be. And um, I had this like goal of, I wonder if we could do every day in April, but it's kind of crazy, but maybe. And um, turns out uh, we pretty much tentatively have three days left at the end of April that um, people are just waiting to book. Um, so we're gonna have Trust and Heard Live every weekday, Monday through Friday. And um, I hope you all enjoy it because it's a lot of fun learning a little bit more about um, our guests and, and their business and, and how they came to be. So um, everyone enjoy your Tuesday, have a wonderful evening, and uh, we will see you soon. Take care. Thanks again, Jade. Have a good one, Brian.